Is the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack really worth it? Let's find out. Okay, welcome to 128KB, Andy here. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you go down there, like and subscribe, because it really does help us out. And stay tuned for live streams. Yes, it will say down there that we live stream over on Twitch. It's wrong. We've now moved over to YouTube. So make sure you stick around for that. And if you want to see my first impressions playing live the N64 service online, well then go and watch our past stream because there's two hours of footage of me playing all the games, <laughs> basically. And there's other videos as well, specifically about the N64 controller, my experiences with that, and also specifically the N64 games as well. So go and check that out. But today we're looking at the whole shebang, including the Genesis games as well. So for me, I was going to buy the service regardless of the price increase because I really enjoyed these games as a kid. It was sort of the nostalgia for me because I never owned a Nintendo Mega Drive. Nintendo Mega Drive? Well, it is now, isn't it? A Sega Mega Drive or Genesis or a Nintendo 64. I actually went to friends' houses to play those. We didn't have one. So for me, it's a big nostalgia trip to go back and relive those. So I wanted to do that regardless. And I was obviously wanting to do it because I wanted to make some videos for you guys. So to make sure you know whether or not it's going to be worth it for you so this is going to be sort of a personal preference the first thing i would say is if you've already got a sega genesis or mega drive and you've already got it hooked up and you've got a crt tv and you've got all the games and stuff well then it's probably not worth it for you and the same goes for if you've got an n64 you've got it all hooked up maybe you've got an upscaler and you're really enthusiastic about this well then it's not for you either really unless you just want the portability of traveling and knowing you've got those games on the switch but yeah, this is more aimed at casual players. So let's address the price first. So yeah, we're lucky here in the UK. It's actually less than 50% more expensive. It's just slightly less. So the Nintendo Switch Online Standard Pack is $17.99 here in the UK, and they made it $34.99 in the UK for the expansion pack, which obviously also gives you the Animal Crossing DLC, but you know, we might touch on that again a little bit later. So for us here, it was just under a 50% price increase. I know in other countries it's actually slightly more. It works out a bit more expensive, but for me, 35 pounds for a year. If you're wondering, that's not an increase in price on top of the base sort of package. You don't buy Nintendo Switch Online and then also buy the expansion pack. You just buy one or the other. And if you've already got Nintendo Switch Online, well then you get a discount for the expansion pass, depending on how much time left you have on your Nintendo Switch Online account. So that's kind of nice. I actually got a hefty discount. I think I got it at almost 50% off, almost. But yeah, for me, the price was justified. £35 for an entire year. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating. You can't buy it monthly or in bulk like sort of bundles of three months that's kind of annoying you have to go straight in for the full year but i have bought games that cost more than this that i've already played less than what i've already played the n64 and sega genesis games so for me it's already worth it and again if you break that down here in the uk that's less than one cup of coffee per month for the price of this so people that say this isn't justified you got to get your priorities straight. Do you know what I mean? Like, I understand if you're maybe a bit younger and you don't have as much money or whatever, but honestly, if, if it's the sake of going out for one coffee during your lunch break at work or something, well, then it might be worth it for you to not have that coffee and to have these games and relive this experience. So for me, the price point isn't really an issue. I know what you're getting overall, can be better and i do agree with that so let's just quickly address that so the overall thing here the online experience isn't overly great people having quite a bit of issues there i really hope that they get sorted out for the people that love online for me i'm just playing these games single player at home alone just reliving my memories it's not a big deal for me so if you're more casual in that sense and you're not going to be playing online with friends then it's probably a better deal for you right now however you know the whole the whole shebang okay you still get access to the nes the snes games you get the n64 games you get the sega mega drive or genesis collection and if you're an animal crossing player which i'm sure you probably are you get the expansion for that as well yeah you don't own it so you only 
only sort of get to play it whilst you have an active subscription. But for me, that's fine. I'm not gonna go and spend 22 pounds of 50 or whatever it is for the expansion for Animal Crossing and then buy this expansion for Nintendo Switch Online. That's a waste of money. So I will pay the online subscription and if I ever stop that, well, that's fine. I can just buy the expansion for Animal Crossing if I want to. We'll see. I gave up Animal Crossing after about a year of playing it. So I probably do that with the expansion anyway. <laughs> so there you go. So the whole shebang, it needs to be improved in terms of the online support. It really does. And also there needs to be more games. Nintendo need to ensure that these games continue to grow. Now there has been a data mined sort of leak where someone has found out that there's actually going to be, I think, close to 40 games for N64 and almost 50 games for the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, I believe. That's pretty good. That's really good. Let's just hope that they keep bringing these games out like really often. So maybe let's say every month instead of the, the measly two games that we get for NES and SNES games, let's hope they bring quite a few more in terms of the N64 and the Sega games. Cause then I'd be pretty happy because if that data mine is correct, that's a lot of games to be getting for not that much more increase in price for the N64, like the expansion pass for the NSO. So, you know, there we go. The other thing is, is the games. So currently what's available, they're actually really fun. I've got an unpopular opinion video. Go and check that out. Like I said, we've got a controller video about the N64 controller. I can't do it about the Sega controller because it's not available in the UK yet. What's going on, Nintendo? But anyway, there we go. So check out that video and check out our N64 game specifically and the live stream that we did as well. So for me, the games, they're really fun. I spent a whole night playing the Sega games it was great. I had so much fun playing like Shinobi and all those good games. They're really good. I'm a big fan of, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, Streets of Rage. There we go. Streets of Rage. I love those games and having the original on the Sega there. Ah, oh, it's, it's brilliant. I just had so much fun playing the Sega games. I know more of the attention goes to the N64, which is kind of rightfully so, but it's so nice to have access to Sega again because, you know, Sega exited the console market and it was really sad. So getting access to these games is, is brilliant. It really is, especially because me as a kid, I played the Sega games so much as a kid, more so than the N64. So the Sega games, I'm a big fan of. They run really nicely. The controls are perfect for the standard Switch controller like the Pro Controller or the Joy-Cons, everything works fine. You don't need that Sega controller to play them. And if you do want a Sega controller, you can get third party ones anyway for cheaper. So you can just go down that route. The N64 games, on the other hand, I do have a whole video about that, but they look great if you're playing not online. So obviously you're getting some issues online. Some people are having really bad issues. I'm not sort of overlooking that, but if you're just gonna play them like I have solo, they look fantastic. The games are super vibrant. They're very clear. The sort of the whole thing is super sharp and it's much nicer than playing them on the Wii U where it had that horrible black filter, which was to stop like or prevent epilepsy, I believe. But yeah, that just really wasn't that great. And again, you've got to look at this as this isn't aimed at as enthusiasts. If you're an enthusiast, like I said at the beginning, this isn't for you really, unless you just want to be able to play these games on the go and not have to lug around a whole system. But if you're just at home and you've got a pimped out N64 console all ready to go, or the same with the Sega, well then these probably aren't for you. You are going to notice sort of slight input delays and things like that. However, if you're a casual player, you've never played N64 games before, or you're like me and you you have but over 20 years ago and you don't really remember them that well they're great yes i had to relearn the controls so the controls for the n64 games aren't that great for the n for the nintendo switch sort of joy cons or the pro controller because you have to press z r to then be able to access the full four c buttons which is kind of frustrating but it is what it is. I would highly recommend that you get the N64 controller if you can, because that's the way they're meant to be played. And I had so much fun playing them with the N64 controller. It was great. I noticed no input lag because I'm a noob. Like, you know, I'm not fully invested in these games. I haven't played them to death and stuff like that. I had to learn the controls from scratch and I had fun. That's the thing, isn't it? The whole point of this is, is it fun or not? 
And yeah, I had more fun playing these games now than I have on any of the NES or SNES games, other than let's say Metroid and Super Metroid. I love those games. But for me, already the expansion has been worth it. I've had far more fun playing N64 games and Sega Mega Drive games than I have for anything else. The only reason I ever bought Nintendo Switch Online in the first place wasn't even for NES or SNES games. It was purely to have cloud saves. So for me, I was just paying the whole base price for cloud saves. And that's it, not even for online, for cloud saves. So to the upgrade less than 50% more, to then actually have a bunch of games I've already sank hours and hours into and had so much fun playing, I, uh, it's worth it for me. For me, it's worth it. And if you're like me, I think you're gonna be excited and happy to play these games as well. Like I said, I've paid more money for a single game that I've played for less time already than what I've played on the N64 and Mega Drive games. So for me, I've already reaped that sort of money back, that three pounds a month, that single coffee. I've had fun and yeah, it's unpopular opinion, but I've enjoyed it. Yeah, the whole service needs to be better. It does, I'm not excusing that. When you look at PlayStation and Xbox and PC, Everything is better, but this is Nintendo. They're always a little bit backwards, always a little bit slow. Let's hope, fingers crossed, that they get the ball rolling now. They input more games. They bring Game Boy Advance or at least Game Boy, but please Game Boy Advance. That would be excellent. And then really, really hope, fingers crossed, every fingers crossed, that they bring GameCube, at least if not to the Switch, then to the Switch successor, because that would make my life, because GameCube was my absolute all-time favorite thing. Every GameCube game that's being remade for the, for the Switch right now, I'm pretty much lapping up, because that was my thing. But yeah, so is it worth it for you? Maybe not. If you're an enthusiast, or you're just gonna be looking at playing online only, there is issues maybe don't do it. If you're like me and you want to revisit these games and just have some fun, it's worth it. It is worth it. I hope the games get patched. So Zelda is the worst one with the fog issue. If you haven't seen it, there's plenty of videos going around or on Twitter. There is some issues there, but I really hope that they fix that. But overall, I've had fun. So let me know down in the comments, are you having fun with this? Are you not bothering? Are you not upgrading because of the price? Like, What's your thoughts overall? I'd love to hear. Are you enthusiast and you've got all the stuff already and you just don't need it? Well, let me know your thoughts. But anyway, like this video, subscribe, stick around for live streams and check out our website, 128kb.co.uk. I'm Andy. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.